Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to Travel Massive Yangon's second live event, uh, Going Local, Pivoting in the Pandemic. My name is Bertie, I'm the chapter leader at Travel Massive Yangon and the managing director of Sampan Travel. Thank you uh, for joining us. We have two really good, uh, interesting speakers with us today. They are currently in the green room, but uh, I will bring them in shortly. We're just going to give uh, a bit of time for other audience members to log in um, and we'll start in about a minute or so. In the meantime, uh, please do say hello yourself. Um, you could, uh, this is live right now on uh, the Travel Massive event page on, on, on Facebook and on YouTube. In, on any of those formats, you can use the chat box to introduce yourself, uh, let us know who you are, where you're watching from, uh, and do please uh, use that chat function throughout the next hour to put your own questions to um, Sumon and Jochen. Um, we want this to be as engaging and as interactive as possible. So as many of your questions we'll try and get through um, uh, as, we, as we have time to do so throughout the, throughout the next hour. This is being recorded as well. So uh, if you have to leave us um, at some point during the next hour, uh, that's fine. You can watch the recording of the event on any of the channels that you're currently watching the live event. Um, and that will be available at six o'clock as soon as we finish, um, six o'clock me and my time, as soon as we finish this event. So um, you can catch up if you missed out some parts of the parts, some parts of the event. Um, and if you um, just really enjoyed the hour, you can watch the whole thing back again. Um, just a little bit about Travel Massive Yangon. This chapter was founded uh, a few years ago. We were doing live, uh, real life events uh, before the pandemic, and we hope to do that again in the future when it's um, safe and legal to do so. In the meantime, we are gonna do as many of these online events as we can. Um, we did one a couple of uh, months ago on how companies are, uh, how they're surviving the pandemic and how, how they are battling the crisis. Um, and we hope to do another one in a couple of months time. If you have any ideas about the things that you would like us to be speaking uh, about and debating and exploring on these um, live events, please do message me and we'll, we'll, um, we'll try and do that. Or if you know anyone who has a good story to tell about me and my tourism um, or insights about the industry, likewise, please get in touch and we'll try and get them on to, to hear their stories um, and their insights. Travel Massive Yangon is just one chapter of a much larger global community. Um, there are chapters in, in London, in London, in Bangkok, in, in, in Singapore, all over the world. And as a verified member of Travel Massive, um, you can uh, join those other chapters around the globe. Um, and one silver lining that's come out of this pandemic is that a lot of these events are now happening online. Um, and those replays are all available on the Travel Massive website. So I really urge you to um, log into Travel Massive and watch the online events from other parts of the world um, and also watch the replays. There is um, there's a blog, there's also a forum and a marketplace. It's a really good community um, where travel enthusiasts and tourist professionals can connect with each other and, and share best practice um, and debate about uh, the tourism industry and how it's battling um, this current crisis. So do update your profile, do make sure you're a verified member um, and do put as much into Travel Massive as possible. Um, right, so we have uh, we have Rick from Bangkok who's uh, tuned in and we have um, someone from Kathmandu, Nepal. Do please let us know uh, where you are uh, we have Ian from Tasmania, we have Jackie from, from Cape Town, and we have Bruce from Tokyo. So a nice global mix. Um, right, let's bring in our two guests. Um, okay. Welcome. Welcome, Sumon and Jochen. How are you both? I'm well. Thank you for having us, uh, Bati. Yeah. Jochen, how are you? Great. Thank you. Thank Good. you for the invitation. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us. I know you're both very busy, um, but I'm really glad you're here to, to share what you're doing. Um, and Jochen, I know you're always traveling, so I'm glad we've managed to catch you while you're in Yangon. Okay. Um, so we appreciate it very much. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to um, uh, speak to you first, Sumon, um, ask a little, little bit about Moken Cruises and how you've adapted your business um, for domestic tourism. And then we'll go... Um, to you, Jochen, and then we'll bring you both in and have a have a conversation between the three of us about uh, how you guys are working together um, during the current um, climate. Um, there'll be questions coming in from the audience throughout the next hour, and we'll try and address as many of those as possible. 
Um, we've got uh, a few more attendees from, from Berlin and from Munich. All right, let's crack on. Um, Jochen, I'm going to send you back to the green room. We'll, we'll see you in a bit. Sumon, hi. Um, Sumon, hi, hi, Rati. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, please, you've been in the industry for a long time, uh, and but more recently, you have set up Mock End Cruises. Um, tell us a little bit about your uh, history in, in the Myanmar tourism industry, and tell us more about Mock End Cruises and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've been working in the tourism industry for 13 years now. So I work uh, mostly in the regional, like uh, in Southeast Asia. I work in Singapore, I work in Thailand and every other country. And I have been work in the, uh, uh, some of the uh, leading um, agency like Trails of Indochina and the uh, Heritage Line. So this is now my fifth year in the uh, cruise industry. Yeah, and we started the uh, Morgan Cruise about a year and a half ago. So from the uh, start of building the boat uh, from the uh, uh, raw, raw, raw condition until the, uh, the boat was complete. So the boat was complete in the uh, March um, this year, 2020, and we launched the boat, but we were hit right away with the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So um, we um, rest the, uh, about two, two months uh, during the uh, monsoon, in the beginning of the monsoon. So, yeah, then um, we decided we have to start again, no matter uh, even with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, or we try our way back into the uh, game, into the market. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I know that um, most of the cruises and the boats that visit the islands at the, in the archipelago, they usually stop during the, the rainy season anyway. So at what point did you, did you realize that you would have to stop earlier? And at what point did you then plan to alternatively create tours um, around Yangon? So af once after we launched the boat, uh, we have the uh, book in for a March in April. Uh, April is a very high peak season for the uh, in, in Myanmar, especially with domestic travelers and all the international travelers during the um, water festivals in a Myanmar New Year. So we have quite a number of bookings in a charter uh, during that period. But unfortunately, government announced that all the island has to close in the uh, middle of March um, until further notice. So we have to stop and cancel all our bookings, um, sadly, and uh, we bring back the boat to uh, Yangon um, at the end of April. So that time we were uh, figured out what we're going to do, and that time was the uh, really uh, total lockdown, even in a Yangon, the whole month of um, April and the whole month of May, so we can't do anything. So when the uh, lockdown restriction was um, reduced a little bit in the beginning of June and July, so we thought, oh, um, we should do that since we have a boat here in Yangon and a lot of people in uh, Yangon um, really, I mean, uh, people doesn't want to take the flight. People doesn't want to take the uh, the, the buses to for a uh, long journey. People always looking for the uh, short holiday um, travel outside of Yangon, like nearby location. So we have a perfect size of the boat, which is five cabins. So we're not going to accommodate um, a lot of people on the boat. So we started announcing about the uh, short cruises right outside of Yangon, going on a one night cruise to Atunte and then Sunset Cruise. We always put the uh, limited uh, capacity on the boat. So it's like uh, 13 people maximum on the boat and we're trying to fit in maximum of 30, even those we can accommodate more than that. So that's how we attract uh, more people. And um, in terms of Yangon has so little things to do because this is the urban area and people always looking forward to go out to the uh, farm, go out to the villages. So once you are on a boat, it feels really different. And when you are going on the uh, canal right outside of Yangon, it's surrounded by farm, it's surrounded by nature's and great sunset. So even though it's just for a night or two, people really appreciate and enjoy uh, cruising um, uh, outside of Yangon. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough myself to to go on your cruise a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and it was a little bit rainy, but it was it was a spectacular, um, you know, twenty four hours outside the city. So I I loved it. It's a great product. But how popular has it been um, since you since you began these these twenty cruises? Have you have you had a lot of bookings? And is that coming mainly from internationals in the city, or is it mainly from from Myanmar people living here? There's no um, international holiday traveler at all at this moment in Myanmar. There's only a uh, local traveler and the uh, expert uh, who is the uh, residents in Yangon. So we have a, a good mixture uh, between expert and the uh, local. 
um, I would say about like 60% are experts and 60% are another 40% are local. But for the Santa Cruces, we have more local uh, people coming on board. And um, so uh, how we attract the uh, market is I after I ran the boat for about a week, I realized that we can't be doing just the boat alone. We have to promote different product with the different itinerary to attract more people. So I started to looking out there a few partners that we can work together. Uh, for example, like Enchado Horizon, crew together, together with the cruise and bike combination tools. And I also work with the other, um, the, 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 the uh, tourism product like Elephant Coach. So I combined with the bar hoping tours in Yangon going on a cruise together, which was quite popular. So not only the Elephant Coach get um, on board in this kind of product, also work with the Belmont Governor Residence because those brand names are quite popular and people already know it. So I, I'm trying to get more people to work together with us. Um, to me, I think that this is the time that we should be working together rather than working alone. Yeah. Yeah. And so continue, please go, go, go ahead. Yeah. So then like a few uh, new product that I created was the uh, very interesting one was the uh, pet cruise. I myself as a dog owner and I always wanted to bring my dog when I'm traveling, but a lot of hotels and the, uh, the, the holiday destination doesn't accept dog. Then um, a lot of people are asking me if we accept DART, but we can't accept DART on the boat with the uh, mixture of the uh, client. So I make the uh, dedicated one departure for their pet cruise together with the pet owner um, and their dog to travel together. It was quite popular and we successfully ran um, last two weeks ago and we're going to do that once a month uh, in uh, September and October. Nice, I, had, I hadn't heard about the pet cruise. That sounds a lot of fun. Um, did you? Yeah. Because you're, you're you're running every week, right? You're 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 off sailing every week, I believe. Yes. Yes. We cruising every week. Um, the I I try to make the schedule to have a fixed schedule, but it doesn't work in 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 this kind of situation. So it's what happened now is I'm playing every two weeks. What's uh, following? What's the market is um, demanding? What's their clients need? And these kind of things. So um, after the other uh, one month of operation um, in the in Yangon, I realized that people doesn't want to travel even for one night outside of Yangon on a Sunday. So I need to remove the uh, Sunday overnight cruise from the. Uh, the departure schedule and fixing as only one night regularly um, departing on a, every Saturday. And the rest of the weekday from the uh, Tuesday to uh, Thursday is I open for the uh, charter cruises and the uh, sunset cruises. So the sunset cruises, um, as soon as you launch the uh, promotion, it's really popular and it's attractive. So I have been launching a, a buy one, get one free tickets of sunset cruising and it was quite popular and we were almost fully booked every week. Yeah. And then on a Sunday, um, rather than like just sitting around for the just sunset cruise. So I created a new program with breakfast cruise, lunch cruise, afternoon tea cruise, and the sunset cruise, four scheduled together to fit in in one Sunday, which is a uh, holiday for everyone. And people have different product and different opportunity to join the uh, whatever the uh, the schedule that fits into on a Sunday. Nice. And, and, and how are you marketing this? Because right now it seems to me there's a lot of, um, you know, experienced providers and tour operators within Mima who are all competing for the same market, right? And that market is a lot smaller than it was before. It's it's a lot that, that catchment area is is only is only so big. How are you yeah. how are you getting this, this this new brand, this new ship uh, out to your, your, your customers? Myanmar is Myanmar is uh, heavily using the uh, Facebook. So a uh, Tons of people use Facebook in Myanmar. Our majority of marketing is on the uh, Facebook. So oh, I, uh, oh, she's back. Simon, I think we're only yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, maybe Thank it's just you. me, but we we lost you for a second. So um, you're saying yeah. mainly Facebook, yeah, so, is, that, um, is that organic marketing or is that mainly you're, you're doing Facebook adverts or boosting? Um, so um, we're trying to do the boosting um, on the Facebook, but 
boosting is very general. So um, the market that we have for the cruise is, I would say, a niche market. Um, not everybody is interested in the cruise or not everybody is willing to spend that amount of money for the uh, one night or a uh, cruise itinerary because the, the cruise products and their uh, cruise traveling always a little bit more expensive than um, normal day tours or uh, um, land tours. So um, the we also do the uh, boosting, but not that uh, not that much attractive. But um, what I found has a lot of organic inquiry is came from the uh, uh, social groups like Biangong Connection, Expert Group, and uh, Expert with the uh, Pets Owner, and these kind of like uh, dedicated, interesting groups. Um, the the marketing there, and also um, the promoting with the uh, travel articles like we have with the uh, Myanmar Mix magazine, and um, uh, I, I was planning the future with Myanmar Times and Myanmar and all those. Um, the travel articles is really um, attracting for the uh, expert living in Myanmar. Which is great actually, because because organic, you know, using Facebook groups or using uh, adverts and newspapers, that's that's free as well, right? So so your marketing budget can can stay untouched and you can um, yeah. uh, spend that on, on other things. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. Simon, thank I, you I barely spend for the marketing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we don't we don't really have that much budget. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. Well, I'm glad it's going well. We're going to bring you back in in a second, Simon. I'm going to yeah, bring in Jochen you. quickly. Yes. I will see you in a, see you in a sec. Uh, Jochen, Jochen, you're, you're live and beaming to millions. You can hear us? Yes. Good. Jochen, hi. Um, so, Jochen, you, you're the founder of Uncharted Horizons. You're originally from Austria, but you've been in Myanmar for uh, many years now. Tell us a little bit about um, your journey in, in Myanmar tourism, how you came to uh, create Uncharted Horizons and um, and tell us about what you're doing now uh, with your company. Uh, yes, uh, so my journey in or to Myanmar started in uh, almost 15 years ago already. I, I spent I had the chance to spend uh, six months in Myanmar working uh, on volunteer projects in Bagan and Napoli back in 2006, and this was when I fell in love with the country, the people especially and i kept on coming back and uh almost every year traveling but i was still living in austria but 2012 i got the chance to take over a, a small uh, eco lodge in napoli at the beach as a manager so and i did that and uh, it's uh, eight years now i'm in uh, myanmar and for two and a half years i was uh, my first two and a half years i was in uh, napoli managing uh, this uh, hotel and uh, there already as a side uh, business, I, I got myself some, some bikes. I am a passionate mountain biker. I'm from Austria. And uh, so I brought my, my own bike with me when I moved to Myanmar in 2012. And on my days off, I started exploring the hinterland, like the area around Napoli, uh, away from the beach. And it was like, wow, like no one is going there. It's beautiful, untouched villages, countryside, super friendly people. I said, wow. So and this is what, what, when the idea was born. I said, oh, wow, I can, uh, uh, I scratched together <laughs> my, my last uh, pennies and, and bought uh, six bikes in Yangon, proper mountain bikes, and started offering uh, bike tours to first the guests of our hotel. And uh, then the word spread and guests from other hotels from everywhere in Napoli, they came. It turned out to be uh, really popular. <clears throat> That's what I did 2013, 14. And so, and then the idea was born, oh, wow, actually hotel management, also nice, but uh, actually this is really my, my dream, what I would love to do, like offer uh, bike tours, adventure tours uh, all, all over Myanmar. And then, uh, so in uh, January 2015, I moved from uh, Napoli back to Yangon and together with uh, local partners, we started uh, Uncharted Horizons uh, Myanmar. So we are now, this was our uh, sixth season now already, 2020, uh, 1920 season. Yeah. And uh, we do uh, bike tours. We are most uh, known for uh, bike tours around Yangon, half day, full day, but we're going anywhere in Myanmar. And uh, especially also the, my most, uh, as most people know, my most favorite area where I lost my heart, it's uh, Chin State. And Chin State, we offer a real, uh, proper mountain bike tours, trekking, motorbike, uh, anything uh, 
proper sure. uh, expeditions. <laughs> and and Jochen, you, I, I remember in March, I think I remember seeing on Facebook, you, from my perspective, were one of the first tour operators to basically, um, for safety reasons, stop doing your tours, I believe. In the middle of March, you, you put a whole, you postponed your tours. Is that right? Yes, exactly. We were yeah. uh, pretty much, uh, I'm not sure if you were the first, but uh, I haven't seen anyone else uh, shutting down before, but I saw there were several reasons. Of course, uh, safety uh, in, back in March, no one knew what is going to happen. So how can I guarantee for the safety of my guides? Of course, also of the guests, but especially also of the people like in the communities we, we visit who have no access to healthcare or like, very little. No one knew what what, what is going to happen. Well, how is this uh, situation going to going to turn out? So I said I cannot uh, take the risk. And a good good thing, luckily, it happened uh, middle of March, so it was pretty much at the end of the season. Like if, yeah. if it would have happened in in, in uh, November December, it would have been complete uh, disaster because we would have lost the whole uh, season. The season went very well uh, until mid March. I just came back from a super nice uh, 10 days trip in Chin State. We had 17 March, we had the last big tours, uh, 10 expats, and then uh, said, okay, I cannot uh, predict uh, what's gonna happen. I cannot uh, guarantee the safety, of my guests, my, my staff, and also not the, the people, like the communities. So I said, I, I don't take the risk, uh, we shut down. It's uh, so, so, yeah. so, 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 so at what point then did you, at what point then did you decide that the the risk was was small enough to begin operating again? Uh, and how did you make that decision? And how did you have to adapt your tours to ensure that it was still safe for um, your guides, your guests, and the and the communities you were visiting? Mm. Well, we uh, it was then uh, in uh, April and May we stayed completely shut down, and uh, but I went out already by myself, like uh, probably wearing a mask, of course, and keep uh, uh, social distancing to see how is the situation, how do people uh, react. Uh, and uh, there was, uh, there, there were then, uh, inquiries from, uh, mostly from, from expats living in Yangon who were uh, already in, in lockdown for two months. Is there anything yeah. we can do? Uh, can you offer? And then we slowly, slowly started again uh, tours, but uh, straight out into the rice fields, uh, basically uh, avoiding any any busy places, not not going to markets, of course, and uh, make sure we provided uh, masks. We brought hundreds of masks to also distribute in the in the villages where we go, sanitizers, also together with uh, uh, Don Wright from. Uh, you know him? Uh, uh, I know Don, yeah, 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 yeah. Paul Piper Shampoo Company, uh, who also donated lots and lots of uh, hand sanitizers, soaps for the people. So we included that uh, in, in our tours. And, and, so and you're busy, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly seeing on Facebook, I'm constantly seeing uh, trips you're doing. I think you're, you're quite busy, right? You've got a lot of inquiries, a lot of bookings, a lot of tours the last month or so. Oh, well, we could be busier. But it's okay. So, so we <laughs> we are just. I mean, now it's uh, I mean, anyone here uh, who's familiar with tourism in, in Myanmar knows very well. Like uh, June, July, August, it's, it's dead season. So now many people, like many tour operators, they don't really feel actually the the real impact of what uh, the whole COVID uh, Corona situation actually brought uh, to us. This will only, uh, we will see in uh, September, October, November, when yeah. usually the, the international tourists come back and they won't come back this year. Then it will be uh, it sure will upon uh, many, many people. Uh, then they will realize. Now it's yeah. anyway. So we, we, we have uh, guests, mostly 90% experts, also some uh, uh, locals. Many expert teachers because the schools are still all the international schools are still closed. So especially the teachers, they're all all back here and they have nothing to do. So we have a lot of uh, expert teachers with us on the tours these days. I, 
Are you doing a lot of marketing yourself? I mean, Sue Mom was saying she uses Facebook a lot. Are you doing a lot of marketing or, or do you let these people come no, to no. you? Facebook is the way to go in Myanmar, <laughs> as we all know. Like, uh, sure. Everything yeah. in, in Myanmar happens on Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, you don't exist in Myanmar. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so we do, like we had, uh, as you will uh, know, we had this uh, pipeline project running, in, uh, especially in June, this old water pipeline going from, uh, which was built by the British in the 1940s. Uh, the pipeline going 75 kilometer, 45 miles out of Yangon, <clears throat> which provides uh, Yangon with uh, clean water. And we started uh, actually just some friends uh, project to, to walk on this pipeline and see where it goes. And uh, I posted a bit on, on Facebook and uh, Yangon Connection and this went completely viral. Like we had thousands of uh, shares and suddenly I had 5,000 people more on my <laughs> Uncharted Horizons page. Of course, then. Also. Really? <laughs> five, yeah, five thousand, uh, five thousand more likes from that from yeah, that pipeline so, project. Wow! And I, I did, I did one one uh, post. It was uh, probably middle of June, like uh, trying to actively promote the local tourism on Yangon Connection, like mentioning, of course, also Sampan, some uh, tour companies who are operating right now, sure. like uh, yeah, yeah. Discovery DMC, Kiri and so on, uh, uh, Jack uh, Green Season Travel, so four people who want to go somewhere, and this, this post went uh, completely viral, like it had, I think, almost 1,000 likes and, and several thousand shares on, uh, on Yangon Connection, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this brought us, like, uh, within a few days, I had so many, so many inquiries and uh, crazy, and the, the feedback was... Uh, That's the thing. It, it, 90, 99% uh, positive. Like a, a few okay. people always, oh, how can you do that? Like this, but uh, you always have these people. And of course, uh, we have a responsibility of uh, two operators, and I'm very much aware of that. So we, we're not doing any uh, unresponsible, risky stuff or, or like. Uh, sure. I, yeah, yeah, but it. One thing, one one thing that this 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 pandemic, this crisis has has done is it has brought a lot of people together, and I think certainly in the tourism industry in Myanmar, um, in many ways, I mean, you know, we're partners, but also sometimes we're competitors, but we are all in this together, right? And I think what I've been quite impressed with over the last few months is how people like yourself uh, and others have been, you know, uh, supporting and promoting each other through this crisis. Um, yeah. And uh, if I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in Sumon. Zoom on in back in now, um, because um, you two actually have collaborated together to create a, a, a mock end cruise, Uncharted Horizons mashup adventure, right? Yeah, all all credit yeah. goes to to Sumon. I was super happy. I met her at an event like uh, two months ago, and she came. Johan, we should do something together. I have this cruise ship now, and uh, let's do some uh, bike and cruise. Thing. Awesome! Yes, let's do this and. Uh, we already successfully uh, did one one tour like uh, two weeks ago, yes. and there's uh, two more to come. So it's a really yeah. great uh, thing to do. Great combination, beautiful cruise, and uh, with adventure in the bamboo forest and snake pagoda on the mountain bikes. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's and yeah. we're trying to accommodate uh, different type of people, different type of groups. Some people are very active and doesn't want to stay on a boat. So they want to explore more places. But a lot of people have been to the uh, place like Tunke, so they want other options. It's great different option to include in the tour programs. Yeah, and I think, I think I, I guess, you know, um, Jochen, I, I've done a couple of your tours before, and what's great about them is that you, I imagine you have a lot of repeat customers, right? Because yes, they may have done that route before, but it's about getting outside the city. It's about going out into the countryside. It's about stretching your legs and the fresh air. And so I imagine um, right now, even though, you know, there are no new tourists coming in, there's a lot of inquiries uh, for you, Jochen, for people who want to just get out of the city and, and get on a bicycle. And having then the luxury uh, aspect which you provide, Sumon, is, is probably the perfect combination. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have a lot yes. of uh, repeat guests. <laughs> as I said, we have, we have many, many teachers from international schools as our guests. 
And they, of course, uh, if they liked our tour, then they, they will tell their, their colleagues and, and some of the big international schools, like there's, uh, oh, there's like 50 international t uh, teachers. And there's also like Facebook groups, uh, expat teachers in Yangon, where these things uh, are being uh, shared. Like we have like uh, four or five of the really big uh, international schools in Yangon. Like these are our best, uh, most uh, faithful uh, uh, customers, yeah. Yeah, some of them yeah. have been since uh, five years, since the very beginning. Like, uh, and uh, and they are here now as well. And the schools are still closed, so they have time and <laughs> more time for travel. We've got guys. We've got one question um, from the audience. Um, it's asking about um, local communities and and their reaction to tourism reopening. Um, so the question is, uh, how do the locals react to foreigners coming into the local community? So, um, Jochen, you mentioned before that you you stopped your um, tours when you thought it might not be safe uh, and you began opening up again when you be believe it to be more safe and the, and the communities were, were welcoming to these travelers. Um, I know that both of you uh, include, you know, um, local communities and, 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 and village uh, trips within your tours. And what I am slightly concerned about in general is that w this word tourism phobia is going to become a, a problem in the future when international arrivals or even you know internationals already in Myanmar want to go trekking or want to go um you know uh, hiking or biking further than Yangon and a lot of communities are not going to have the confidence to welcome those outsiders back into their into their house which is um upsetting in many ways because certainly from my experience often the most uh, special moments of a tour through Myanmar are those intimate um connections and 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 moments with 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 local communities um how have you felt that with, with the with the villages and the people that you work with in your destinations you're traveling to? Have you found some some nervousness about welcoming travelers back, or has that not been a an issue for you? Maybe Sumon, maybe you can start, and then I'll go to Jochen afterwards. Yeah. So uh, when we restarting the season, I was really worried about that either. So um, um, what I did was I actually. Um, giving out the, uh, the, the custom-made marks to all our uh, clients on board. And we actually suggested all the clients, when you're going on the uh, uh, excursion into the villages, we suggest to wear the marks and keeping a social distancing and all those things. It's also show that uh, respect to the uh, local community that we're keeping the uh, social distancing and we are wearing the, uh, the marks for them and for us, of course, for both sides. And... Um, so once we arrive to the uh, community and villages, I don't see that much concern uh, from them. And uh, yeah, I, I we did be usually generally Myanmar people are very friendly and very welcoming. So that's the uh, things that we usually see every daily life when you go into the uh, the villages. But um, I would say from my side, we don't see that much fear from the uh, community that where we have been visiting so far. But I don't know the. Uh, really far outside of places like Yangon, like where Yosha, uh, Yo Chan is visiting with the bike tours. Yo Yochan, what would you say about that? What's your experience been bringing travelers back into yeah. these villages? We also have not made any any negative uh, experience uh, yet. Of course, we, uh, we make sure our guests, when we go to crowded places, uh, even when we stop at the shop, we ask our guests to wear the masks we always provide the, the sanitizers. We asked before, like the owner of the tea shop, uh, it's okay, we come in, yeah. We know Yala, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. They're all very happy to have us back. Like the, the boatman we used to, to go to Sechi Kananto Island, they haven't seen us in two months. They were so yeah, happy sure. to, have, to have us back. I mean, really sometimes, I, I go on a lot of tours my, myself, as you know, sometimes you hear like a treasure driver, like, uh, like Covid, 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 no? Okay. So, but, uh, I think oh, I think but, local people know obvious between the uh, the foreigner who stay who live in Myanmar and the tourists who came outside of Myanmar, and also the country has been no international flight has been for like how many months? Four months now. So it's everybody know in the country that there's no international tourists coming in. Okay. Well, in that case, but then looking ahead to the future, um, we're not sure when international arrivals will come back, but at some point they will. Um, do you think that's then when, when, when this may be a problem, when we start welcoming international 
uh, travelers back into Myanmar. And then we start seeing maybe communities getting nervous that, um, you know, these people who haven't been in Myanmar for the last six months potentially um, are going to um, be a risk to their communities. I mean, I don't mean to be too pessimistic, but do you think that is a, something we're looking ahead towards in terms of um, working with these communities? Um, um, please, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Simon, you, um, you go uh, first. Yeah. You As being a uh, local myself, um, being a Burmese, I think I might have a different point of view um, from the, uh, the, yeah. So I, I really do think it's really depend on the uh, different villages and a different community. So uh, Myanmar has like so many ethnic group that we have, uh, we all know. And I think some are very, a little conservative and some are very, very, uh, friendly and very open and are very welcoming. So I would say that's really depending on the um, different community, different villages, and also each village and each community is managing by the, um, the, the village head of the village. So it depends on the individual rules and regulation that they apply in the village and the news that they're receiving or rumor that they're receiving from the outside. Okay, Jochen, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, uh, I think, so, so you mean when international tourists are coming back, right? This was not it. Well, I mean, I mean, right now, as we know, that there are no flights coming in. So any foreigner here yeah. on the whole is hasn't left the country. But when those flights begin again, um, yeah. these foreigners have come from other places, which, which may cause nervousness uh, in the villages that they may be, may be carrying the, the virus. Uh, yeah. Uh, firstly, let me say, I, I think Myanmar and the Myanmar government are doing a very good uh, job, actually, in uh, keeping the country closed. Because you, you see in, the, in, the, in, in Europe, like crazy, like I'm from Austria, and I read in the Austrian news, outbreak, they're calling all guests, uh, all tourists back from Croatia, hundreds of new cases. It's, it's completely not under control. And as long as the situation in, in, in in, in Europe, in the US, it's like that. Myanmar would be, it's very smart, of course, to, to keep the country closed like this. Of course, it hurts uh, businesses because there's no tourists coming, but the damage would, would be much, much uh, bigger if they let the mm -hmm. tourists in too early and suddenly, oh, and, and then when you have uh, cases in these uh, villages because of tourists, then you have the real problem. Then, uh, Myanmar tourism is uh, mm. no, mm. so it, it's very good. It's like the, like this. So it's of course it's hard for all of us in the tourism industry, but it's 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 never not not, not worth the risk to open the country early, so, so, and, and and then uh, have the I don't even sure. want to imagine what, what could happen. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think uh, that I think that's why the tourism industry probably you know. As much as any other industry, if not more so, has this responsibility because we are, you know, our, our business is essentially taking people from A to B, right? Whether that's from Yangon to Twente or from 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 Europe to, to Myanmar. Um, and if the tourism industry is seen or or is actually uh, carrying the virus with it, then um, we're going to have a huge second problem in terms of um, a lack of faith within the country of the or, of, of the tourism industry, which is why. The precautions that you're taking that we're all taking are so important even if it feels um slightly um unnecessary at times because if like Jochen says uh a traveler whether that's from yangon or from abroad does end up taking the virus and other parts of the country um that is um obviously a, a potential tragedy for that community but also um the worst pr possible for for me and my tourism yeah, yeah, if if one case found in the village because of the tourists, then that's it, and we won't be able to visit any of the uh, community. Yeah, yeah. E even government yeah. is they allow. I think community were closed by themselves, and they won't allow outsider to come in. Sure, um, it, it, it's an impossible question, but it's the one that many people are asking. Um, when do you? Um, oh, when are you expecting international arrivals to to come back and? considering that what, if any, preparations are you making for the return of international arrivals? Um, Sumon, maybe you go first. Um, 
to be honest, I really don't know when the uh, internationals coming in. And uh, my focus only is now on the domestic, um, the traveling. So um, I, I really, really don't think that international will be come back even until end of this year. So um, myself and we all should be focusing on the uh, domestic traveling right now as much as we can, coming out with the uh, different itinerary, different travel program and promoting the uh, local tourism for the uh, domestic traveling. Um, we all should be thinking out of box and because all the uh, different tour programs are very regular and everybody offering the same thing and we really has to be stand out and out of box in order to stay in the game in order to survive and keep going on and um, what I am preparing for the um, international arrival is really not in my head right now so that is now is like survivor stage for next um, six months um, to keeping all the uh, crews and all the employee, keeping a job in the company, getting a uh, boat out and ran. And I think even if we survive next six months and we will be able, able to go through another year um, with the uh, domestic tourism or when the tourists come, we're already ready for a, uh, with the operation and with the uh, great product that we have been um, the running on the pilots, running on the uh, testing out in the local market. Yeah, um, Jochen, we've got a question on, on that on that theme from, from Bruce from Tokyo. Um, he's asking about travel bubbles and, and limited entrance. Do you, even if we're not going to see travelers from, uh, from Europe and America in the near future, do you think that potentially the end of this year we could see arrivals coming from Vietnam and Thailand and Singapore and Hong Kong? Well, it's really, really hard to say. It's, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, it's uh, very hard to predict uh, even one month ahead uh, or even a few weeks ahead uh, these days. Yeah. But, uh, like we, like for, 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 for us, especially we have many guests from, from, from uh, Singapore and they're, they're great guests. So I have to say, I, I hope so, yes. It would be great if there would be a travel bubble and the guests, especially from Singapore, Thailand, would come back. But I don't. Uh, I don't rely on it, so I, I don't count on it. So same as uh, Masumon, it's the, the the local market for us, uh, like expats, but also creating new programs, new itineraries for for, for locals. Like so many young local people now, we, we get so many inquiries for for bike tours. Like they are starting to become interested in, in uh, adventure. So, so this is what we have to focus on because these are the people who are really here and uh, like uh, it's real guests. A anything else is like uh, yeah, fantasy. Okay, well, I, I, don't, I don't even yeah. hope, obviously for, for this year, I, I don't uh, expect any international arrivals. Okay, well, well let, 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 let's talk about then your, your products, Jochen. So, so um, you're doing a lot of Yangon and, and around Yangon tours. Um, traditionally, you do a lot of Chin Stay. That's your favorite place in Myanmar, you said just before. Um, yeah. when, when will you be able to return to Chin Stay with, with tourists, do you think? Or have you already? Uh, no, we have not yet. Okay. Because in uh, rainy season in, in Chin Stay, it is uh, really, really bad. So, so, so we ne usually we, we never run tours in rainy season, uh, June, July, August in, in, in Chin Stay, because the weather is uh, completely unpredictable. So it might be we send guests up there and they're not even able to 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 leave the the guest house. <clears throat> what, what what I would do uh, together with uh, I will go with another friend uh, who's involved with the Ministry of Hotel and Tourism. We will go in uh, beginning of September in probably in two weeks to Chin State and see uh, evaluate the, the situation. Go to the villages and see. If they are okay to welcome tourists, like uh, expats, uh, local people, again, and only if we get the green light from the, from there, from the local communities, from from the regional government, then uh, we, we will uh, be ready in uh, beginning of October. Is traditionally start of the Chin State season. Then we will be ready. But if they say okay. no, please uh, don't. Uh, we will not. So. Tell us, um, tell us about your your plan to cycle from the very northern tip of of Myanmar and Putao down to the the southern town of of Kota. That sounds incredible. Tell us about 
<laughs> tell us about how how you'll do that and 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 well, well this, this idea actually was uh, only only really born uh, yesterday i i met the uh, amazing uh may Mia Bonwin. many people know her she's the chairwoman of Myanmar tourism marketing and uh doing a lot of, and uh general manager of Chatrium Hotel in Yangon. And we were sitting together yesterday having a coffee. And we were talking last year, I cycled from Yangon to Singapore, four weeks, 3000 kilometers, charity fundraiser. <clears throat> we raised $20,000 for street children in Yangon. And so for this uh, year, we actually had planned to cycle from Yangon to Bhutan and from Bhutan to Kathmandu, Nepal. Another 3000, 3500 kilometer, a bit more challenging. <laughs> uh yeah. a bit more a bit more clients like to see singapore was pretty pretty flat so we said okay let's do it uh challenge ourselves a bit but uh because of uh, obvious reasons this is uh, not going to happen like all borders uh, are closed and uh so we postponed this to 2021 and it's hopefully we can cycle to Kathmandu where we were talking and then i said uh actually i mean myanmar it's a huge country like from the more northernmost point, uh, like north of uh, Putao to, to the far south, Kotang. It's as the crow flies. It's uh, it's uh, over two thousand kilometer, and when you follow the the roads, it's easily uh, three thousand kilometer. So this is uh, actually was only born uh, yesterday. This project, but uh, this is our plan to do in uh, December or January, and. Uh, we put it on there like uh, we will uh, raise funds for a project which will be very likely a school project in uh, chin state this time <clears throat> and uh also at the same time promote uh, tourism in in myanmar like visit the most uh, beautiful places along the way to we have, we have our, our blog we, we will see maybe we can get the uh, tv involved or uh it's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's I, really great I basically I started working uh, on, on the concept uh, today. It's, yeah, it's like from from north to south, but, but not, not straight, but zigzag, and uh, like it should be a real. Oh, where is Bertie gone? He disappeared. My God, I hope he will be back. <laughs> <laughs> so now now we have to to moderate. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that's the, the plan to cycle. It will be around 3,000 kilometer. We're planning to cycle 100 to 150 kilometer per day and uh, present the most beautiful, like famous places, but also unknown places. Meet with also with the local uh, cyclist groups uh, who will show us the nicest uh, places in, in the area. So that's the idea, promote the yeah. tourism, cycling. Yeah. And do the, the the fundraising for the for the for the good cause. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I think uh, with the uh, all the uh, international tourists not coming, it makes us think about how we can promote what we can create in this country. Because I feel like um, in a long time, Myanmar has been promoting the uh, classic destination like Yangon, Mandalay Bagan, and Inle Lake, and everybody selling the same thing. But now is the time that we can create different things we can create unit itinerary and unit product uh to show the world that what well, the country can offer exactly okay, i'm back i was also saying yeah, yeah, yeah Bertie is back. Yeah. <laughs> sorry you, you guys think, you guys seem to be doing quite well without me so continue sorry please carry on yeah yeah, yeah sure, sure. We, we took over you can uh <laughs> no <laughs> uh <laughs> no i was also talking yesterday like in Myanmar, there's so much huge untapped uh potential like Tourism, ecotourism, especially like there's still so much to do, which no no one even uh, thought about, and uh, there's un unlimited uh, possibilities to promote uh, responsible, sustainable eco tourism in uh, Myanmar, and, and now it's a, a, a great time to work on this. We all have a bit uh, more time if we want or not, yeah, but for we sure. Do. So. So usually I never have the time between October and April. I, I when I travel, I travel with my guests, or or I'm uh, stuck in uh, Yangon because it's so busy. But now this year I, I will have the time to explore uh, new areas and also promote them, uh, meet the local uh, communities, see where there is uh, potential. 
because yeah. other years usually I'm, I'm limited to the rainy season and then, then uh, some places like in, in Chin State remote places I cannot even get there because uh, we've also, um, also not, not... Bruce Bruce has also asked about restrictions between the states um, for traveling domestically um, essentially there are different restrictions depending on where you want to travel to um, and as an international in Myanmar you may require uh, well you will require certain documentation depending on where you're going um, it has it is a fluid situation though so trying to keep up with what regulation is is in place um is a challenge um but um sumon maybe you can tell us about um the archipelago when's when is that going to open up i mean obviously it's closed now anyway because of the rainy season but um do you expect that to uh begin welcoming travelers again in september october usually um the archipelago and islands are reopen in the uh, beginning of october um I uh, hope hopefully they will open in the uh, beginning of October, even for the uh, local and uh, domestic tourists to come over there. Um, if it is coming and if we receiving the booking, we will be going down down to the uh, Magui Archipelago. But it really depends on the uh, what the uh, market demand. If if there is no um, interest or if travel restriction is stay there, um, the the boat won't be able to travel or, or to the uh, Magui Archipelago yeah yeah okay um we've got a question from ian as well he's talking about expats in myanmar um, and uh, looking ahead i know we don't know when the country will open up again but he's suggesting that these expat communities could be um uh great promoters of travel to myanmar um once that becomes available again um i know you're both focusing on the here and now and what's going on um, but maybe look, if we can just look ahead to maybe to a rosier future in 2021. Um, Sumon, how, how were you planning to, to, to market more kind of cruises, you know, before this all happened? What is, what is your marketing strategy in terms of getting people to come to Myanmar? Because there's so many beautiful places in Southeast Asia. Um, Myanmar does have to compete with those countries to attract international visitors, yeah. right? So um, as a cruise operator, we work with a lot of the uh, tour operator in the DMC uh, and uh, all over the world and around the world. So usually the clients are uh, aged between um, uh, 40 to uh, 70 years old that who coming to Myanmar who has more budget to spend around the country. And um, our book in, I would say around 70% uh, B2B in the past. But now it's totally changed. Things were totally changed, and um, we we don't know who are the uh, other international market players. Stay in the uh, international tour operator in DMC. Stay working in the market. So I think that's uh, to be to be honest. I really haven't think about it yet for the uh, next year. Yeah, sure. but okay. yeah, if B two B businesses come back, of course we will focus uh, on the uh, B two B business, like how we used to with contractings and the uh, the product presentation and webinar trainings and trade show. Yes, of course the trade show that we go on the uh, every year, like ITB Berlin and the um, WIT in London and all those things. Yeah, which may well be online in the future, anyway. So yes, you may not have to leave. Um, it's changing. <laughs> We've, we've got just over five minutes left. Um, uh, please, those listening, do, do send your questions in um, before the end. Um, in the meantime, I know we have some um, business owners uh, and business directors um, watching. Um, Jochen, you, you've given a lot of suggestions about what you're already doing and, and what you'd recommend, but is there any sort of specific advice you might give to a, to a small tour operator or experience provider in Myanmar or in other countries about how best to um, to pivot what they've done traditionally to an international market towards domestic travel? Uh, well, what we do, you have, to, uh, you have to be innovative, you have to be flexible, especially like uh, domestic travelers, uh, our, our 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 guests were before 95 percent uh, foreign and now we, we get of course uh you have to see you have to uh understand your 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 uh, guests your clients what they want uh, what they are looking for so we, we are changing you have to be flexible you have to be uh of course we, we can also for 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 our uh 
domestic Myanmar guests, we can offer the tours uh, cheaper because our, our, our costs are lower. Starts even with the ferry to Dala. It's uh, instead of sure. uh, four dollar for foreigner, it's it's, it's a foreigner chat for for. So we offer. We're trying to attract the groups, especially groups of friends, but also uh, company or, or sports teams, or, or and they 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 coming. And, uh, this is okay. uh, we will uh, we we had some. Uh, what's great also Sumon had them uh, uh, eat sleep Yangon. It's a, a YouTube channel. It's a, actually a, a Swedish expert teacher. It's a, a usually a popular YouTube channel who is doing uh, videos about uh, Yangon. So we had them on our uh, tour, which brought us a, a lot of uh, publicity. We will invite uh, Myanmar travel bloggers, for example, to try our new tours. We have some brand new tours, uh, day tours. We also we, we used the, the quiet time now, me and my guides, we, we explored the some new areas around Yangon. We found some amazing, beautiful old monasteries, villages. We never seen any foreigners. Said, oh, you're the first foreigner we see here in our village. It's like one hour away from Yangon. Beautiful, especially now in the in the rainy season. Also, yeah. like we've uh, always, uh, yeah. The, don't. Uh, Rely on the quality of your old uh, standard uh, products. Be creative, be innovative. Uh, think outside of the box. Only because your product sold well in the past doesn't mean that's the right uh, product uh, to sell uh, right now and in the future. Offer. Be different, be different. That's uh, most. Uh, okay. That's um, what we try to do. We, we, always, we, we never offer what, what anyone else is offering already. We create our own uh, products, itineraries. We try to be ahead of the competition because the copycats they will follow anyway. And uh, <laughs> so we, we will always tr try to be one step ahead, and uh, we're quite successful with that strategy. Offer I like see. when we offered uh, the the pipeline pipeline hike, it was a huge uh, wow! Like on uh, went viral on Facebook because people didn't even know about it. Yeah. Uh, like things like this, even Voice of America with like uh, 400,000 views on uh, Voice yeah, of yeah, America. Uh, Reuters picked it up as well. Voices Reuters, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, were yeah. even in the, in the New York Times and, and yeah, uh, sure. China Morning, <laughs> South China Morning Post and, and friends yeah. of mine from Spain. Oh, you were on Spanish TV. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Simon, yeah. Simon what, what, what advice, if any, would you have to, to small business owners uh, trying to to pivot that product. Yeah. So if the uh, COVID nineteen restriction and saturation continue for another six months or year, um, I think to me uh, or a, a small business owner um, like living in the country, we can't be um, focusing only on the expert. Um, the majority of people are local here, so the marketing channel has to be changed in the language because we usually use a lot in the English but the language has to switch into a uh, Burmese um, to get more, reach out to more audience. And um, other very useful um, tools of marketing are uh, local travel bloggers who write in the, um, the local language and also a local television channels to reach them out, reach them out and work together to uh, attract and achieve more in the uh, local market. Um, if the... Um, the COVID-19 situation better and country open up, I think the travel style will be really changing. I think majority will be a millennial um, coming to travel from the age between 30 to... Uh... Oh. oh, I think we've lost her, right? <laughs> we, okay, we've got about a minute left. Hopefully, Simon will join us um, before before the end. You're, can, you're still there? I'm here, I'm here, yes. Yeah, all right, Jochen, you have, you have 30 seconds. Uh, for someone living in Yangon now, or someone who is looking to come to Myanmar as soon as it's safe to do so, um, what do you recommend that they do? The most adventurous trip they can do. Uh, and you, you, you are allowed to um, promote your own product. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, uh, also, we have uh, around Yangon, half day, full day, and two day tours of all, all kinds of, for beginners, but also for freaks, we can do 100 mile tours, we can do 120 mile tours, we 
can do it. Ten mile sightseeing, like we have something for everyone. Like uh, it's now awesome for for bird watching, for example. There's so many, so many. Your 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 culture freak. Like there's so many beautiful old monasteries. No one knows about super friendly local experiences. Like uh, our bike tours, they're not only about the uh, biking. Of course, they're also about biking, but it's the, the experience. The yeah. And, and this can be whatever our guests uh, wish wish for. It can be we can uh, design wh whatever our guests they tell us what they want, and uh, we we have uh, more than five years experience now, and uh, we promise we make it happen and more. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's that, that sounds good, and I'm looking forward to joining you in Chin as soon as we can. Um, Very welcome. Simon's back. Simon, um, we're out of time, but we're glad you're back to say goodbye at least, and I'm glad you're back. For me to say thank you for joining us. Um, thank you both of you for taking the time out of your evening to uh, tell us what you're doing. And um, it sounds like you're both um, managing as well as can be expected. So, so well done for that. And um, thank you for sharing your stories and your advice. I know it's um, very much appreciated. Um, thank you to all our audience members and our listeners. Um, we are out of time, but we will be back in a couple of months. Uh, for another event. So um, if you're not already a Travel Massive Yangon member, please uh, please sign up. Make sure um, you fill out your profile so you're a verified member. There's a lot of really good um, online events and uh, replay of events on the, the platform. So do check those out. Join our Facebook page and um, we will be back with um, more um, guests and more stories and more, more, more suggestions in a couple of months' time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you from Yangon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.